All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of the Spare Room Talks. Today, we are joined with the one and only Connor McCarthy. <laughs> welcome on to the show. Thank you very much. Great to be here. Thanks for coming in. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Awesome. So for the people who may not know you from before, maybe you can tell us a little bit about yourself and what you're up to. Yeah. So I'll start in present day. Uh, my name is Connor McCarthy. I'm a business coach. So I, I have my own coaching practice and I also uh, coach on Seth Godin's Alt MBA program. Uh, going back in time a little bit more, I set up a couple of... Uh, festivals in Ireland and going even further back in time I used to be a software engineer mm -hmm. so my coaching brings the kind of multidisciplinary nature of my career to bear on the on the people that I work with across all these things across all these things and tons of other little side projects yeah fantastic and what's what's the alt MBA for I know that it's obviously getting a ton of popularity but for mm -hmm. folks who may not know it from before so alt MBA I'm very biased but uh, I think it's fascinating because I don't see anything out there like it at the moment it's a leadership and management course mm -hmm. but I, because I coach it and I've coached hundreds of of, um, of people through the course I've kind of seen on a deeper level how it really helps people to see both themselves and the world in a new light mm -hmm. now it's not that's not a woo-woo thing to say it just opens your eyes to the the possibilities that are out there for um, for a new type of story that you can tell yourself about yourself mm -hmm. and a new way to see the stories that are out there in the world. Mm -hmm. So um, people come to Alt MBA from every conceivable um, background. I mean, I- not, not just business people. Not just business people. When I signed up, I thought they'd made a mistake when I got accepted. Because, and, <laughs> and apparently a lot of uh, students get this. They're like, there must be, they must have sent out the wrong email because <laughs> it looks like, yeah. um, it looks like it's for kind of executives and top level CEOs and like world changing da, da, da. so and it is ultimately but everyone kind of just gives it a go and that's kind of the first step in Alt MBA is is taking that leap and it's just a it's just an application form but it's amazing how many people have are full of this imposter syndrome of they'll never take me they'll, they took me <laughs> Like what's going on, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it's amazing to see just that little transformation that people go through. Um I, I always tell everyone to go online, have a look at the application and just give it a shot. It's a, it's not your usual send in a CV and we'll decide. Like the questions in the application are quite unique. Yeah. Uh, they take a little bit of thought um to answer them well. Um but that kind of also speaks to the quality of the syllabus in the course. Yeah, I mean, you know, with um I don't know if you know anyone in Google who did it, but uh, back in my time in HubSpot, I've uh, I've had a lot of colleagues who, uh, at least yeah, at least two to three who've who've taken it, and you can see them getting like the getting excited about the shipment of like books, mm. uh, all the individual books you have to study, which essentially is you know a big part of the uh, mm. of the curriculum, mm. and it was almost like this um, inside joke for this kind of like tribe or inside joke or like just inside reference where they're all up to something cool and all of us outside are like guys what are you talking what are you yeah, working like what is yeah what is the alt MBA? because we know the alt MBA, but obviously like the the details of it are reserved for those of course who uh, who participate dude yeah so and we, it wasn't just an educational thing it was like much more about the network oh as well. much more about yeah i mean i think a lot of people join thinking they'll learn mm, deep management principles like harvard mba type right. stuff doesn't come across as like too academic per se like it's more no it's more um Again, it's, it's kind of just about learning how to see. You, you right. know, it's it's <laughs> this is like I, I always I'm a, I'm a huge fan of it, and whenever I talk about it, I'm I feel like I'm selling people on it. But the flip side of it is is that it's really hard. Yeah, Alt MBA is is a difficult month. Like, and anyone who's been through it, I suppose it's like um, Hell Week in the Navy SEALs. Oh you know, yeah. like people do that. And they're Full like, oh, we, we did. Huh? Yeah. It's it's real boot camp stuff. Right. Like time is time is tight, and and I've had everyone. You know, one of my students had. He was an entrepreneur in South Africa. He had four businesses. He owned the biggest wind farm franchise in South Africa, this kind mm -hmm. of stuff. He had a family of four kids and still he found the time to do it. And his work was wow. amazing. Wow. And he was a gold standard for me as in, you can do it. Excuses. If this have guy to can do park it, I in. mean. If this guy can do it, anyone can do it. And he's wow. just one of the 3,000 people who did it. So yeah, it's tough. That's crazy. Um, but after a while, you get into this rhythm and you do it and you ship and you ship and you ship. And it's, it, your work is never perfect, but you put it out there, yeah. you see what people say, and the community is absolutely amazing. Because again, like, like the Hell Week thing, you're going through such a hard time. You mm. have to reach out to other people to say, isn't this hard? Like, how are you finding it? <laughs> right, yeah, like, yeah. You know, And you, like, you lean on each yeah. other for support. Yeah, and yeah, nowadays, yeah. It's, it's, it can be hard to find people who, who get you and can support you. 
but that also you can support back. Sure. Everyone has something to offer everyone else. Which is which is part of, I suppose, the whole kind of selection process behind it and, mm. and you know, finding other people that are that are like us or like Seth Gordon always says, you know, like, you know, people like us do things, do things like, like this. this you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And and they're those statements that you read and and so much of Seth so there's so much of Seth in this course. Mm-hmm. Um and that idea of of people like us do things like this comes alive yeah. in Alt MBA. You come out of it the far side and like I was Alt MBA five and I think we're about to start Alt MBA twenty eight. Wow. And in sessions wise and people they identify with their with their <laughs> yeah. uh with the session that they did but overall we're all just a big alumni group and right it's great i, I know i can reach out to anyone and we have this kind of shared language as well that's that, that's an added benefit that mm. i don't think people realize you exactly. know, like, so you're meeting like the community and you're meeting all these people that who knows maybe like a couple of years a couple of years down the line you may start to collaborate or something like that that's, absolutely that's the, the biggest part of it as as you said mm. it's just the whole community that you yeah. build around it yeah. but t- touching on that then like what would you think would be like the biggest commonality between everyone cuz you said that not everyone comes from the same sort of oh, usual background um the thing i've seen the most is people people who want to change something about themselves or their let's say work situation that sounds quite broad but it's it's that's because it's more common than you think you know i coach there's there's a lot of people who come into it who are stuck in a job want to level up but can't take the time or can't afford let's say a harvard mba Mm -hmm. type program um but they need something um then there's people who are let's say on like kind of late teens early 20s that they don't know what to do with their life so they're looking for a focus and a new direction mm-hmm. and to kind of dig in and find out what they're really what their deeper purpose is um, and everything in between people who've just lost their jobs people who run voluntary organizations CEOs of non-profits have had dancers artists um, everyone like everyone yeah, yeah like it's from, amazing yeah, from all walks of life yeah, really, yeah. I, I think the, the one commonality between them all and I touched on it a moment ago is that no one thinks they're going to get in Everyone is everyone's so full of imposter syndrome. Literally the one thing they have in common. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. yeah. Everyone I like, talked to is like, I didn't think they'd accept me. And I was like, yeah. yeah, me too. And then when I was asked to be a coach, I was doubly so. It's like, no, now you've made the biggest mistake of all. Like, you you must have got this wrong. We you know this this is like crazy, crazy coincidence, but we literally published an art uh, a blog post on our own site mm. uh yesterday. Mm. Was it yeah, yesterday. Um about how uh, imposter syndrome is uh, is actually good for you. Mm. And we believe that it's it's it means that you're coming in with the right mindset that you you do want to do this justice. You are not just like half-assing it. You're actually here to you know mm. uh, to do a great job, and you mm. and you you're constantly testing yourself to see like will I actually be able to, to do this or not? Totally. Yeah. I, I think the, the yeah. article was about like uh, it, it was in context to kind of like public speaking, like mm. oh I'm not ready to to face an audience yet. Mm. And we we're talking about how like everybody has their own unique experience, and so you know on on the one hand. No one could really say they're they're the be all end all expert. And on the other hand, no one. I mean, assuming you've been doing it for a while, no one can come in and say, like, I don't know anything at all. Surely you do, at least with your own experience. Yeah. Surely you have a different lens that through that lens you'll be able to bring in something unique and different. Mm. Yeah, it's I, it's a fascinating thing. Everything I totally agree with everything you said. It's it people I think feel it and and hear about imposter syndrome and go, that's a yeah. bad thing. But it's it's kind of your shadow because every day there's something you're being an imposter syndrome about that you feel you can't do, you shouldn't do or whatever. Yeah. And you'll never know unless you go there. So having yeah. that, taking that, the, like Seth talks about the minimum viable audience when he, when he talks about marketing. There's also this idea of the minimum viable step yeah. and taking yeah. even a tiny step in the right direction mm-hmm, is mm-hmm. huge for imposter syndrome. So yes. filling out the alt MBA form, tiny step just like psychologically filling Psycholo- that out and, exactly. and thinking that you yeah, yeah. Like you, maybe, you've taken maybe i could the right direction maybe i could yeah. yeah and and so switching um switching gears now to mm-hmm. uh, seth godin specifically mm. uh so we're huge fans of his, his teachings me more than emin me and, me and emin we, <laughs> we, still we, fan. we yeah. bring yeah. an interesting balance i think to tribe tactics i'm yes. like yeah yeah i'm like the yes man yeah. and he's like he's like the what? No what problem with no man. <laughs> <laughs> the other guy. The, the, the other guy. No. <laughs> he, he, he's, he's, def- he's a lot more like of a realist, I think. And yeah. many times I've come to him with this something, something that's very, um, I'm not going to say vague, but like something that's just very yeah, unstructured and yeah. And he'll be like, yeah, but how do we actually operationalize that? Cause, cause yeah. you know, he so works in the important. So, yeah. so, so oh. speaking like of the, the mouth and the brain. 
<laughs> I don't want to say. Let's stop there. But like, okay, so say Seth Godin, he's he's will be here for like a week if we were to go through all mm. of his teachings. But let's maybe you can walk us through mm. s- through some of the ones that stood out to you from from the uh, you know from from the work as well that you do with Alt MBA mm-hmm. in terms of one that you think people may find originally as okay something quite vague and actually how can a mm. how can a startup uh, potentially apply that to their to their day to day. If, if that question makes sense at all. <laughs> yes, it does. I mean, there's so much, I spent all of last year reading Seth's yeah. books because I, I'd realized I'd read maybe five or six and then I was doing Alt-MBA and I, I love the world that it's couched in. So I was like, yeah. I should go and read all his books. And it's fascinating to look back on Seth's work history because he has done a lot. Like yeah. he, was, he was a software guy, man, yeah, yeah. like managing software engineers and did the startup thing back in the 80s, then a publisher. And he did the whole book industry thing. And then he got into, you know, marketing and uh, permission marketing and all that. And, and, and now he's in education mm-hmm. and God knows what's next. Sure. So um, his books, I think, are difficult for some people to read because they're not about tactics per se. Mm-hmm. I think he's seen so many industries rise and fall and come and go that he's kind of like the methodology doesn't matter as much as the underlying strategy. Yeah, yes. So I think a lot of his work is about how do you think the right way about this problem? How do you think the right way? How do you think the right yes. way about it? And he, he's, he's very good at giving a, just little kind of seeds, little thought bombs mm-hmm. for you to kind of go, well, that's a, new, that's a reframe on this classic problem. Mm-hmm. Or that's a, there's, there's so many possibilities out there um, to, to deal with whatever problems yeah. people are facing. So, I mean, you can... Like, that's so true. Actually, he's, yeah. he's got... Like some of his classic books, they're classics for a reason. Um, like Purple Cow, I think, mm-hmm. is one I've read so many times because it's it's such a good primer on on making something that is, is so it, that is immediately gets people talking. Right. right. Yeah. You know that immediately, not even to look at, but to use and to feel and to think and talk about. It's like there's your marketing. It's done. Yeah. I mean, it, it sets whole marketing end of things. You could say it started really with Purple Cow when he kind of said, don't do marketing, have marketing be in the product or service itself. Then yes. you don't really have to do any any traditional marketing. Absolutely. And, yeah. and that culminates in, we were talking about it earlier, um, his current book, This Is Marketing. Um, what's the tagline? It's make make things better by making better things. Um, I think that's the, the short end. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, where he's kind okay. of saying, don't, don't sideline marketing into an office in, in the building. Like, make it everywhere. Every touch yes. point, every conversation, the janitor on the bottom floor, yeah. it's all marketing. There's a guy called um, Rory Sutherland. He's like a big advertising guy. I think he's Ogilvy Advertising. Mm-hmm. And um, he, he, he's quite smart when he, when he talks about how organizations do marketing and do branding. And he said, if you go to the best restaurant in the world and you pick up your fork and one of the little t- tines on the fork is bent, you're going to have a bad eating experience. <laughs> like everything has to be spot on. Sure. Like if you yeah. walk into that restaurant and it smells a bit whiffy, bad eating, you're just going to spend the whole time going, what's that smell? It's ruined. Yeah. So the smallest thing, the smallest thing that is that makes yeah. the biggest difference. You walk into a restaurant and you're the only one. Or you're, you're the only one, one. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just good market. It's full. It must What's be good. The, yeah, yeah, exactly. Or like yeah. a library with a hundred quiet people and one really loud person just ruins the whole. Thing. Ruins the whole thing. And yeah, that's actually, a good so point. I think, he talks good about, point. I think he talked about that in one of his uh, daily uh, blogs. He talked about like if there's like two. I think it was literally an experiment that was done: two food trucks doing the exact same food, exact same price, exact yeah. same everything. One with a queue and one without. Uh, and everyone would join the one with um, with the queue. It was either him or somebody else, but yeah, it just highlights the fact that like we follow we, the herd. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. and we want to, we, mm. we, you know, we, we, we look, we seek that social proof and we seek like, you know, I see my, to, to your point around stories, like I see myself a certain way. I tell myself a story about who I am. I tell myself a story about the world that I live in, mm-hmm. about the people that I identify with. Um, and for example, all these, all these people I identify with more or less, let's say people who, who have good taste or in the know are queuing up over here. So I should probably... Mm. Like, I, you know, I, I I get the trick as well. I would like yeah. to, even though, let's say logically, you'd be like, yeah, but this one, I can just get my food right now. Exactly. People like us do things like this. Yeah. I want to I, I want to be in the right. I want to make the right decision of the yeah. two food trucks. And all these people seem to be making the right decision. So and Probably one of the huge, the yeah. hugest, that's not even the right, one of the biggest, like, uh, uh, takeaways from, and, and overarching themes from that, from that book, I, in, in my opinion, is the fact that, you know, people like us do things like this there is never one 
there's no longer something called the mass market. And with mm. the internet, mm. I, I, I sound like a, you know, like a, like a grandma explaining this, but like a little bit, you know, with the internet, like now everyone is just so connected and, you know, so aware of other people like them to, to mm. your point. And mm. so with that in mind, you know, it, it, we're big on this idea of like subcultures as well. Like everyone belongs to some form of a subculture. Mm. And you may be in a part, certain culture as a parent, and you may be in a different culture or tribe as a, uh, as a, as a, as a you're, you're this type of business owner, you're this type right. of uh, parent, you're this type of whatever, like, you know, uh, fitness person, so on and so forth. And based on kind of like the hat that you're wearing, I suppose, you are seeing other people who are in that space. What are mm. they doing? And, mm. you know, looking to, to join yeah. their habits, their activities. And totally, because it's one thing to be connected and it's another thing to have meaning in that connection. Yeah. Yes. Um, like the one of the things that, to go back to Alt-MBA for a second, that it succeeds at is that there's so much online online education that doesn't mm-hmm. work because yes, it's great. Everyone's connected. It's a video and it's, it's tutorials and it's a platform, but there's no there's nothing deeper than that. Yeah. There's no accountability. As soon as it gets hard, people just go, oh, you're learn, I'm learning, I'm going to learn C++ online. Yeah. That's really hard. Actually, I'm not going to do this anymore. You know, it's where old MBA is kind of like the the pressure is on. Like there's people like me saying you can absolutely do this, and it's 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 something that is worth doing. And then you've your peer group around you going, let's do this together. Yeah. So it succeeds really well at not just connection, but putting meaning and community around that connection. Mm-hmm. So that's the real power of of networks and the internet. When it's like, yes, yes find your people, then go deep. Yeah. 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 I think. A lot of the the weight that you bring to this as well is, uh, you know, your background as a, as an entrepreneur, as a as a serial entrepreneur, I would say as well. And so we we had this question for you, which is, you know, this timeless topic of branding versus sales, mm. and which one gets more sales? Yeah. And you know, like we because we think that, you know, chicken or the egg, you know, like we, mm. you know, mm. we, sales. You know, I'm, I'm generalizing like crazy right now, but sales tends tends to be like a like a one to one thing, you know, versus branding, which is we like to think a a one a one to many thing, where mm. you know, the brand can actually you, you can make the case that branding can actually get more sales than sales. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? It's a great question. God, the, the like branding has changed so much. Uh, you go back to the days when a brand was almost a building it was yeah. the building of the people who created the car or created the whatever the, the garlic press yeah. and now a brand the way people talk about brands they're more like friends and people they're more like people yeah Do you oh, know yeah, what I mean? totally yeah they're yeah. really and like you look at the the interactions and all that on yeah on. yeah they, they like hearting your favorite brand it's <laughs> like i love my xyz um so w- when you think about brands being like people what's the role of sales you know sales is is probably the most uh, relevant touch point for interacting with a brand, you know, and who, like, how do you do your sales? What, what do you mean the most relevant touch point? So if, you know, you're, you're a company, you need to sell your products or services and you're, I mean, everything you do, as we said, should be part of the, the selling process. So no mm-hmm. matter where people come yes. in, they're seeing what they're, they're seeing what they need and what they hopefully want, Everyone's to, want to buy. Everyone's aligned. Yeah. yeah. So when it comes to that moment of sales, you want that to be the outreached hand that is the most um, aligned, I guess, with the brand. So they're both important. I know this is a bit of a sitting on the fence. They're both mm. important. Um, I think the brand is is built through all the sales interactions. So all those people saying, I had a great interaction, helps feed back to the brand, helps the brand grow and, and right. evolve. Um, because sometimes people say, I think you're alluding to the fact that sometimes people say, oh, the brand is what people say about you when you're... Um when you're not in the room, when you're not in the room. Their, their yeah. 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 yeah, brand is the promise. This is, a, sure. this is the promise you make um, on, the, on the products and services you deliver. Right. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, this, the sales feels like the day-to-day, kind of get it done, keep the, keep the ship going. But yeah. sales is also an opportunity to build a brand. Sure. Yes. Do you know what I mean? And that goes yes. back almost to the marketing thing of like, always be thinking of how is this improving the brand? Right. Mm-hmm. No one wants, like if you, if you run the marathon, Mm-hmm. And then you just you can see the finish line, and then you just you you get a lift. You jump <laughs> on the back of someone's bike. Right, it's yeah, a bit yeah. like mm, really. You're it's the final. There. It's the final mile. You know, it's kind of yeah. that that can often be the hardest, but it's the one that's filled with the most 
uh, touch points and the most interaction with the end customer, and it's all it's all about the end customer. Right. Yes. I mean, what are your thoughts on that brand versus sales? No, I I, th- I think that's a uh, I guess it's 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 a tricky one for sure, and mm-hmm. I think it depends a lot on the kind of industry or, or space that mm-hmm. you're in in general. But I co- completely agree with you in the sense that a lot of times brand is helps people get their foot in the door or mm-hmm. you know uh, influences their perception of you, almost like upper funnel sort of. Uh, you know, interest in general, but at the end of the day, you still do need sales yeah. to, to, to convert at the end of the day. But I, I also, I always think it's a very tricky balance to find because I feel that uh, a lot of, and I'd love to get your thoughts on this. Um, people tend to have the attitude, especially if they're a small to medium sized company that they shouldn't invest in brand really. Mm-hmm. They should be investing primarily in sales or, you know, like very targeted advertising, mm-hmm. things like that. And they said, well, you know, um, for example, creating some sort of uh, d- investing in our brand in some way, shape, or form, mm-hmm. whether it be creating an educational series or you know mm-hmm. some sort of video campaign or whatever it may be, they may feel that yeah, obviously that's important, but you know we can't sort of attribute it properly. Like, mm-hmm. how can we you know f- get the right results from it, and how can we measure that? And I always feel that um, I guess I'd love that's to get true, your yeah. thoughts on this. Like, would you think that brand is applicable to people in not necessarily in their earlier phases, but people who, let's say, would be in a small to medium-sized company that would primarily or traditionally purely focus on sales. Versus like it being like a luxury for, oh yeah, big brands exactly. who yeah. have money that they don't know what to do with. Ex- exactly, exactly. <laughs> big brands, the thing with big brands is, I, I think big brands have this luxury because I know when I buy from a big brand, if I buy a Samsung TV, mm-hmm. I'm only buying it because I know it's not going to be crap. Right. Yes. Because I, of that promise. Because it has saying, the word yeah. Samsung on it. Mm-hmm. It's not, I know it's not the best. And even if I went up a notch to the next more, most expensive, okay, it's just, again, it's not going to be, it's not going to break on me. Whereas if I buy from some unknown brand, I'll be like, this might, this might not work. Um, so the idea of a brand at that huge scale is almost becomes a bit defunct. Because they're, they're, they're already, the wheel is spinning. They just have to keep the wheel going. Yeah, yeah. When you're much, much, much smaller, um, the, yes, it's, it's so important to build a brand because you need to, you need to be a, a person that this... Some sort of credibility. Yeah, and this persona yeah. that people buy from. Um, and, you, you know, you need all the things like trust and you need, you need to fit their worldview. Um, but the sales, again, is an opportunity to put your brand into the world and to, to like, to to build and learn and it's almost the kind of lean startup methodology yeah, to do yeah. that for your brand. Yeah. Like sales, it sounds like sales equals get money, but sales actually means get in touch with customers. It could yes. be the content that you create even. I mean, yes. putting yourself out there and being, being, rec- being, let's think of it this way, like not being unknown, you know, no longer unknown. Yeah. 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 Unknown. yeah. So yeah. Where it's like, I at least seen, I, I've at least seen this company's uh, content before. Yeah. And it's funny because sometimes with, with smaller companies, there is no brand. I mean, anyone can go on GoDaddy.com and buy something yeah. for okay. ten bucks to last you the whole year. It's mm. not the, the your URL is not your brand. Mm. However, the the people behind those the uh, mm. the personal brands, the personal brands sometimes are the actual company brands when you don't have anything else. And even all the way up to like, you know, pick your favorite like um, Fortune five hundred company. Many times it is synonymous with you know like Apple, say, and Steve Jobs, for instance. Mm. Um, you know, it's 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 many times synonymous with that. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. And, yeah. And and ju- just just to build on that, then I I I really think that from I guess a practical point of view, it would really depend on the kind of sort of product or first of all whether it's a B two C sort of type um, industry or, or a B two B type industry mm-hmm. and what kind of product it is. I was, I was talking to a friend yesterday and he was asking me because we were having a similar conversation and he mentioned mm-hmm. or asked me um, what do you know what type of toothpaste you use every morning? And I was like, uh, I might recall the name, but it doesn't really sort of ring a bell or, you know, like it doesn't come to mind that easily. Yeah. And the reason behind the question was that... You, you said you weren't going to use Sensodyne because you've seen yeah, many of their ads. I, yeah. Like, I swear to God. I'm yeah. <laughs> no, I, 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 I swore that I'd never use Sensodyne ever again because for, for the longest time they have the same repetitive, annoying <laughs> ad. And I was, all right, let's let's not take it any further. We don't want to get sued. Don't get in that rabbit hole. But, but yeah, but no. But so, 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 something like toothpaste in general, um, most people, I'd, I'm assuming, would sort of go about getting their toothpaste as something that just does the job. Or for example, if you're buying potatoes or you know 
cucumbers or vegetables, yeah. you're not really going to pay attention or unless you're really into it to the kind of brand. Or the same with, for example, if you are a construction company looking to buy cement, mm. you might, maybe if you're in the B2B space and you're really in the know, you might sort of be influenced by the credibility and the brand that they mm. have. But at the end of the day, you're just trying to get the job done. Mm. And, and I feel that, yes, sure, brand could help in some of those spaces. But I think ultimately, it's it, to an extent, I could be wrong, but I think it's it's naive to assume that investing in branding, or at least, you know, to, to the extent that you would in sales, is not the right thing to do for, for most companies. Mm. And, and, and I think that that applies to both small and large companies. Mm. But I but I do think that a lot of small companies would still benefit a lot, even more so than sales, mm. by investing in their brand. Mm. I think, yeah, like, it's amazing how many <coughs> brands get built by listening to the mm. customers. They mm. start out and they're like, we, we want to do X, and then they start doing the sales, and the sales is the bridge right. to the customers. And they start listening to the stories that the customers tell themselves about why they use their toothpaste or why they use their cement. Mm -hmm. And then they get this feedback and they go, oh, we're actually, we're more of it. We need to start thinking of ourselves as this type of cement company. Mm. So that kind of constant play of like sales gets you out in the world and gets the raw data that you can then feed back into the brand. And over time, right. you can become, because Airbnb, there's, you know, this, uh, their origin story is fascinating about like how much they learned by going and staying with Absolutely. the people yeah. that were on their platform. I think there was 10 in New York to begin with and they went and they stayed with them all. They had conversations. They went, oh, now we understand what Airbnb is. And the brand came out of that, yeah. out of those interactions. So if sales is a way to reach out and touch a customer, absolutely do it. But the, like, the underlying benefit is you get to build your brand yes, in, totally. in, in a really useful way. Totally. Yes. And so... One of the things that the, the Alt MBA um, is known for, of course, is, uh, you know, leadership and, and, and management skills, not just, not just, you know, the, the tactical parts of it, from what I understand, but also how to think differently around these things. So once again, and I know it, it, it's, it's fascinating that Alt MBA has attracted folks from all walks of life, uh, some of them not even in business to start. Yeah. But let's say looking at startups, for instance. What are some of the things that stood out to you as, as you've helped you know, coach the, um, the Alt MBA that you think a startup would, would, find, uh, would find useful and valuable to apply? Um, oh, there's, so there's a couple of things. There's, um, you know, one, one of the things we teach, it's very simple, it's just goal setting. How to set a goal, lay it out on paper and stick to it. Mm -hmm. um, and when I'm out in the world walking around and I ask people about how they, what their goals are and how they structure their goals, there's usually a, I want to do X by this time. And that's it. Yeah. Where there's so much more in between. Like one of the most important questions you have to ask yourself when you're setting a goal is what are the obstacles? The hard part is going to be identifying the obstacles and how am I going to get around them? Yeah. Like if you just deal with that alone, it really, in a very truthful fashion, that's worth as much time as you can to put into it. Because everyone wants to get fit by this time, start a business by this time. But no one's willing to say, what, what if I'm still broken two years after trying to start this company? You know, what if I haven't lost the weight in nine months mm -hmm. after being in the gym? You know, but just by saying, what if? What if these things don't happen? At least then you get to say, right, now I've got a new way to think about this. Right. Now I've got, I can pursue this slightly different direction. In terms yeah. of, so, so in terms of like really just acknowledging the, the obstacles that you have? Look at it all. Don't just look at the fun bits and when we get there, it's going to be great. Look at the fun bits, but all the stuff. Like right. there's, you've heard of mountaintop goals? like be profitable company up here. Yeah. The foundational goals are like, oh, yeah. it's the base camp. It's the, you know, how do we get up there? What happens if sure. X doesn't happen? What if we run out of money? All Similar this. Similar to kind of like, yeah, yeah as well, yeah. Like different like uh, horizons and things like that. As but well. probably the most, the, I think one of the things that has the most impact on people who go through Alt MBA is learning more about empathy. Mm -hmm. um, and for any startup. Empathy towards? Let's say uh, empathy towards the customer. Okay. Let's just narrow it down to that. Now, empathy is, is huge. Empathy isn't like a thing you learn and you're done. It's yeah. a constant. Perhaps it's empathy towards process. yourself and your capabilities realistically as well. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah that ties in. It's amazing what you learn by kind of going, I'm going to learn about this thing in the outside world. Oh, yeah. wait a second. That's me too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a great, if people want to look it up, there's a great video. Uh, it's actually a commencement address, but it's a video as well. Uh, there's, someone made a video of it as well by a guy called David Foster Wallace an American author and it's called This Is Water okay. and it's a great way to quickly understand uh, what empathy is 
Yeah. Now again, that's a quick understanding. You have to practice it to actually sure, to do it. Sure, how it. Um, and, and Seth, he wrote about it in one of his blog posts. Um, he has this idea of sonder. Um, sonder being the, the moment you realize that everyone has a noise in their head, just like you have a noise in their head. Everyone has fears. Everyone has regrets. Everyone has hopes. Everyone is annoyed about that thing they did two years ago that they should have done a different way. Mm-hmm. Everyone is wondering if that person is thinking about them. Everyone is going, yeah. is thinking, maybe I should write a book. You know, that we all have these rich inner lives. Yeah. And Sonder is a moment where you go, oh, right. Okay, it's not just about me. So I, I would recommend to anyone watching and listening to this, yeah. go watch This Is Water for a very quick kind of deep understanding of, of empathy. Mm-hmm. But the idea of empathy for startups is huge. Yeah. Because if, if you can if you can have empathy towards your end customer, that will feed back into your sales, into sure. your brand, and into your whole marketing efforts. And as again, marketing is is everything yeah. in, in your company. So And it, it's at the core of like the so one of the first steps, right, for a startup product market fit, you know. How do you find mm. how, you know, obviously finding a big enough uh, problem to, to solve, mm. but you know, who's to say that your quote unquote solution mm. is 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 the right fit for that market maybe yes it, it is a problem but that's not the solution for it well well if you were to take empathy it's actually market product fit because you go out and you go to your market or you find a market and you listen and you understand mm-hmm. and you you care enough to kind of go what are the problems that these people are facing yeah i love that yeah. now i can figure out a solution to these problems right yeah. Yeah. And, and that's why uh okay um, just another uh, uh nerdy like seth godin piece but like <laughs> you know in his in his book, um, All Marketers Tell Stories, he says one of the chapters is their worldview got there before you. Mm. So you can't come in and instill a new way of thinking, even though that's such a slogan these days and whatever. But what's a lot more effective and just a lot more needed mm. is go seek the points of view that already exist and mm. build something for a particular point of view. We like to call that a particular culture, but I think it's all yeah. the same thing. Yeah, There's already a group of people who think that you know so and so should be a certain way rather than saying hey guys like here's a better way to do it, it it's just too much you're 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 creating too much resistance versus saying we totally agree with that and this is why we built so and so for instance yeah yeah be a meaningful specific to those people exactly and there's, there's far fewer of them than you think and that scares for people because they think i'm going to start a business i need to get i need to be profitable and get to everyone but the, the right way to do it, and, and this is marketing, I think Seth uses a similar analogy of the key and the lock. Like you don't build a key and go looking for a lock. Yes. Right. It's crazy. You know, you find the lock and then you design the That's key true. to fit that lock. So yeah, having, having empathy for your end customer mm-hmm. and not just demographics. You know, they're males between the age of this and this and they live here and they have this mm-hmm. much income. It goes deeper into psychographics. Yeah. And if you were to go deeper again, I would say that's the empathy piece. As in, yep. right. w- what do these people wake up right. thinking about? Yeah, what are their dreams? What are their fears? Yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely, exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we can stay here for forever, but we value your time. And uh, oh, that's so thanks, quick. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thanks for joining us, and we'll we'll stay in touch for sure. Thanks absolutely. For Thank, Thank you very for much. Thanks, thanks for having me. Thanks. Yeah.